but uh, I know that uh, complexity is complex, right? So you need multiple <laughs> angles to look at it. So here I'm offering one, maybe the very unique one. Uh, maybe it will impact your career for the next 20 or 80 years. Okay. Uh, so my name is Yan Chuan Chen. I'm a professor in uh, mechanical engineering. By training, uh, I'm a hardcore uh, control guy. You know, control systems, control of power electronics, control of lighting, you name it, whatever. And also control of complex systems, not just management, okay? We keep it under control. So today, I first of all, I feel excited actually, uh, not because of the coffee, but it's because of <laughs> the setting here. Um, I'm, I'm talking uh, uh, complexity in front of uh, complex uh, group in here. Um, so I feel very excited. So we, we should be able to have some good time today. Thank you, Paul, for making this one happen. Um, so it's in a short time. Thank you all for coming. So here's an outline, and first of all, I assume you know nothing about uh, <coughs> fractional calculus, and you are still uh, wondering what is complexity, okay? So then uh, let's um, together to see whether we can offer a new angle, new view of complexity. So um, to give you something nice, so you see I put something big data, and how the big data will come in naturally, and can harnessing this new fractional calculus view of complexity. Okay? When you acknowledge that, that, yeah, this makes sense, then you will make more sense out of the big data. That's the message. And uh, I'm also doing an encyclopedia uh, volume on uh, fractional calculus in complex systems. Uh, so therefore, you have a chance to write a chapter for me, so if you are interested. So first of all, what is a fractional calculus? Uh, some of you uh, from my group probably heard about that, but many of you maybe it's the first time you he heard about this. So if you're in a barbecue party and how you are going to tell people what is fractional calculus? Okay, here's the way to go. So of course you have to know what is a calculus, right? So then uh, integer order calculus. So for fractional calculus, basically saying that uh, have integration and differentiation of non-integer orders, okay? Non-integer orders, but you may wonder, hmm, why fractional? So I have to tell you that fractional is just a misnomer, meaning abuse of terminology from, due to the historical reason, okay? Historical reason. But when, this, when we say fractional calculus, you should say, oh, this is a non-integer order. It's not integer order, okay? An integer order is the one we learn from, from textbook, okay? In fact, the order could be a complex numbers, okay? Uh, not real. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> so then first reaction is you should ask how this is possible, why I never heard about this so far. And then, uh, so, oh, okay, sounds good, and why I should care, and so uh, without it I live so well so far. Okay, so we need to answer this question. And, uh, and is it good to me, to my career, to my research, okay? So all these three questions, we need to address them, not in full, but in fraction of satisfaction, we'll see that. Um, first of all, let me throw out a definition for you. Okay, uh, you'll say, well, this is a little well -known. what is a fractional derivative of a function f? But uh, this is messy. But I would like to remind everybody that uh, uh, before we learn differentiation, it's better to learn integration first. So that's the usual way to introduce uh, so then we introduce integration of fraction order basically is uh, uh, inverse power function 1 over t to the power of 1 minus alpha. Alpha is between 0 to 1. So then uh, you convolute with the f divided by gamma alpha. Then this is called fraction order integration. Then you do integer order di uh, differentiation. Then you end up with uh, definition of alpha's order derivative. So basically it's a conver convolution. Okay, with a special type of kernel, happens to be inverse power function. And uh, I guess uh, in the complexity uh, uh, world, everybody start to meet the term inverse power law, okay, or power law. So we are here uh, seeing the inverse power already, but it's in a function way, okay? So that is the uh, definition, okay, let me go back. So this is nothing but F 
convolute with one over T alpha. Um, here, n is one, so it's a zero to one. Okay, so that's the definition of fraction order uh, differentiation in a Riemann Liouville sense. It's called a Riemann Liouville definition. Oh, there are other definitions. You can just imagine that uh, using this finite difference, okay? You see that difference is operator to the power of alpha. Then you do expansion, you have a infinite many uh, dimensions. So then you can keep this one as a finite number. So this is called short memory principle. Okay? So this one is called uh, Gramo-Letnikov definition. Okay? All these slides are basically compiled by uh, my uh, friend and uh, Igor Pauluki. So we share these slides to to give tutorial introduction of fractional calculus. So let's see a uh, dancing and curve in here. This guy, a green curve, is the fractional derivative of order from minus one to one, and passing zero. So zero, the original function is y is x, it's a just a line, okay? So you do first order derivative, we get a one. You do negative one derivative is first order integration is unit parabola. So everything between minus one's order to first order plus one order is this dancing curve animated here. Okay? So there are all something in between integers. Okay? In between integers. So then uh, this is the same thing. Like you have sinusoid. Do the first derivative you got cosine. And there are something in between. Okay? So this axis is the order from zero to one. And this is uh, T, okay? T. So we have seeing. Seeing is believing, right? So we have something in between integers. You agree with me? Yes. So in fact, we are using that kind of in between integers already. So showing that uh, adjustable range is kind of like fractional order calculus, okay? You have something you can tune, like the order, alpha, okay? But imagine you are facing a complex system. Okay, so you need uh, many, many uh, integer order tools to get the problem solved, okay? However, use one tool with adjustable range. It's called adjustable range. You can solve all types of nuts and bolts, okay? Um, all sizes, okay? So this is from Richard Megan. Um, uh, he, he gave this one in 2012, uh, shared this picture. But first time people saw this. But he told me that, oh, by the way, he visited UC Mercer in 2013. Um, the second year I was on campus. Um, and he said he, he actually borrowed the idea from his students. Okay. So uh, as a professor, it's really nice. You can learn from your students in this way. Uh, so uh, this is a rice cooker. And you are going to see in the, in the market Okay, you, you can order one from online. That for neural fuzzy, okay, neural fuzzy. So think about what is fuzzy. Why we have fuzzy logic? So it's because we ask the question about what's in between logical zero and logic one. So, right? So going in between, you may have some nice consequences. Okay, all discoveries. We broaden your view. Maybe the best thing is in between, not at the extreme, right? So in between thinking is very natural for, uh, for our science discovery, okay? So I call that this a fraction order thinking. So when you ask, what's in between integers? Yeah, there are nine integers. <coughs> so uh, what's in between logic zero and logic one? So there are fuzzy logics. So something in between, right? And so in the order splines, that you have uh, cubic splines, you have quadratic splines. Then people talking about fractional order spline since 1990, okay? Uh, uh, regarding moments, you heard of a mean, variance, it's a first order, second order moments, third order moments, fourth order moments. But what about fractional order moments? Why are the moments have, have to be an integer order, okay? It could be non integer, but what's the reason behind it? Why would you talk about it? It is a big topic for class. Fractional lower order statistics. Because in many cases that the second order, the variance may not exist. I'll show you some examples. Like we already learned that uh, uh, 
the dimension we live in and is three dimension, okay? But um, there are fractal dimensions, okay? Dimension of 2.5, okay? Dimension like 1.5, 1.7. So that kind of a non-integer order dimension, it is a, a reality today, okay? Reality today. Think about your, your, your sponge you use in your kitchen, okay? Is this three dimensional? Probably not. Probably it's 2.9 something, okay? Uh, we have a lot of soft matter uh, physics, physicists on campus, right? So, so what's soft? Okay. How to define is soft? Okay. And for a transformation, everybody knows that you can turn the signal from time to frequency. But what's in between time and frequency? Good question if you ask. There is a dedicated <coughs> subject area is called TFA, time frequency joint domain analysis. Okay? And but actually the more general setting is fractional order for a transformation. For FRFT. There are therefore in time domain you don't see a feature, in frequency domain you don't see a feature. But in fractional order domain, you might see some features nobody else can see. Isn't this useful? Of course. So today we are talking about general topic uh, definition about fractional order calculus. And I want to connect in two dots, like fractional calculus and complexity. And if there is a line in there, I'm going to show you that line, connecting that dots. So, but sometimes, I already said something, but sometimes you really feel like you need a rule of thumb, uh, you need some guideline about when I should talk about, when I should look into fractional order uh, calculus and use fractional order thinking in your research. Everything you, you touch in here, anything, one or more in here, you should immediately think about using fractional calculus. And you heard about uh, a term, it's called complex fluid. Have you heard about that? So you can add complex in front of something. That means a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Complex human. Yes, uh, human beings automatically are complex. You have to be complex. Otherwise, we already distinct, right? So uh, distinction already, OK? So all the living things are complex. It, they have to be. Otherwise, you don't see it. Today is already distinct. Okay, so so anything living, okay, anything living with bio, it must be complex. You see the tree turning color beautiful. Do you know that they are doing high perform performance computing and very complicated computing going on to decide when to fall? <coughs> yes, it is. So that falling falling leaf is already a complex system. So, I pitched very high, but uh, what's the exact date the fractional calculus was born? Uh, you, can, you can see that. So it's fractional calculus was born in 1685 because of a letter from Lobita asking, oh, but what if, what if N is half? N is half. The reason Lobita can ask this question is because Leibniz invented the derivative notation like that. Imagine that the Newton used the what? Dot. It's the first derivative, double dot is second derivative. If you cut one dot into half, you don't get half, you got two. <laughs> okay. So notation is important. So Leibniz is smart and he, he should be remembered and appreciated more for this notation. So that today we can start to talk about hmm, what if n is not integer? Okay? So Last week I was uh, I was in uh, Delft, in Netherlands, and uh, I visited the um, Huygens house. Do you know the Huygens? Uh, Christian uh, Huygens. Huygens is the first guy uh, discovered the, the the ring structure of Saturn. Okay, but there's another thing you didn't know that uh, Huygens was the mass tutor for Leibniz. And he influenced both Leibniz and Newton. Okay? So, this very great scientist. I was sitting in his seat and looking up last week. Okay. 
Well, uh, this one I'm going to show you. Uh, it's not you don't see very well. And last year I was in Belgium and attending a, a conference called PID uh, 12, PID uh, uh, 18. So he 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 used the keywords to summarize how many papers. So the fractional uh, order PID is second place. I just want to tell you that in that domain, that area is already becoming a dominant common sense to everybody. So that's a part of justification of saying that, oh, one day useful consequences will be drawn. Yes, it's being drawn right now, uh, including today's seminar. So even Paul agreed to let me talk about this topic. Okay? I'm joking. <laughs> it's okay. So that's a good consequence. And in my field, this is a, a prestigious award we won in 2011. It's called Control Engineering Practice. It's a journal, a journal, a top journal in my field. So he published a paper there in 2008. It's uh, top cited. So then they choose top three and give the award, best journal paper award. So uh, 500 euro cash, okay? Uh, pretty nice. Uh, it's called Tuning and Auto Tuning of Fracking Order Controllers for Industry Applications. That's 2008. And through uh, several people's effort, including my effort, we made this fraction order system into the official keyword list. So, okay. And uh, we also published uh, a few books, uh, Flash U, it's a little bit self-promotion, but uh, I just want to say that uh, here are sample of some good consequences from my group. Okay. So fraction order control systems, and the foundation and applications and fracking order stochastic processes, uh, fracking order data analytics, and fracking order signal processing, and so on and so forth. We included a lot of uh, uh, techniques. Okay? And we also published a paper regarding a book, small book, on a distributed order dynamic system. What if you have infinite number of orders? Okay? Are you integrating the order? What the system will look like? So that's exactly the response, our response to the need of modeling scale-rich phenomena. Okay, you have a lot of things you don't have only one scale. You have multiple scales. You have infinite number of scales. Okay, infinite number of scales. So that's distributed. I don't have time to go into technical depths to just give you a feeling that was this fractional or motion controls. We have lots of lab experiments. In this book, we showed the following. That our under fairness comparison condition, we have to show that the best of the fraction order controller will be better than the best of the integer order controller. It makes sense? So uh, everybody start to get convinced, say, oh yeah, we should take a look. I can, I can do better than the best, why not? Okay. And then these are the latest uh, books, I don't have time to go inside. But here, some people do a social media, social uh, uh, science, and talking about the crowds of humans, cyber human systems, modern controls. We talk about fracking order, crowd dynamics. If any of you do something about collective dynamics, I have to tell you that collective dynamics must be fraction order, okay? Must be, okay, must be. Although each individual, is integer order behavior, okay? So this is basically a collect collective dynamics, okay? how to quantify the crowd dynamics, okay? Well, I spend a reasonable amount of time to get you warmed up, so let's continue. So about what is considered as complex? So it's, oh, this is complicated. That not necessarily a kind of like complex when you see what, you start to believe that is complex. Tell me, do you, do you have a clue how to answer this question? What is the defining signature of being complex? Do you have an idea? I'll answer this question for you, okay. So first of all, Complexity, it becomes a branch of science since 1990. It becomes a popular topic. 
If you say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing something simple. Now that doesn't look nice. So you have to be complex. So complex science, especially in uh, uh, sociology, uh, the complex science is a new field of inquiry, okay? To bring the complexity into the picture. But human being is always driven by the need of understanding better and better regarding the complexity facing us. Uh, we are facing, okay? So since 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, each era there are some buzzwords invented, okay? Why? It is to help us to have additional tools to quantify the complexity. complexity. So I was asking, then uh, after we crossed the 2000 uh, millennia, what's beyond? So we can continue to introduce buzzwords in here. I don't want to go through the details. This slide can let me talk uh, another hour um, or another day. Um, a lot of things in here that I don't even want to dive into this. But just so you get a sense that pursuing the better understanding of complexity is still an ongoing effort okay? by introducing new framework, new tools, and so on and so forth. What's beyond that? So, so I want to share with you uh, something uh, in physics. So people say that I went to physic physics conference and all I got was a lousy power law. Okay? Uh, 20 years ago, you can use a formula to generate a paper to be published in science and nature. So basically they say, oh, uh, you, you just get some data and uh, pl plot in the log log plot. You see a linear trend. Then you linear fitting. Then you say, oh, I discovered the power law. Okay? Then you submit to science or nature. Okay? So, so I'm almost answering the question I raised about what is considered as being a complex. So the complex meaning, uh, the complex uh, means you need to have some sort of power behind. Okay? But the power law usually is hidden very deep. We don't realize there is a power law. So here is I'm, I'm going to make it explicit that for fractional calculus, okay, fractional calculus, there are some hidden connections between complexity and a fractional calculus. But that's hard to get that con connection. Why I didn't see this? Because there's a middleman here. That middleman is called power law. Okay, power law. So therefore, if you understand that, you'll see the multi-scale, scale rich, anomalous, all these things are connected to fractional calculus via the power law. Of course, the renormalization, the brutality, all these things, uh, there's a power behind this. And extreme events, because of heavy uh, tailedness, intermittence, burst, all these words are connected to fractional calculus via the power law. Uh, fluctuating variability, all these things you have heard about, and the non locality and long term memory, and so on and so forth. And any, any, any type of use of complex, complex this, complex that, okay? Fluid, I told you, you can see many others. You should know that there's a connection to fragmental calculus via the inverse power. Okay, inverse power. So you heard about 80 20 rules? And also, this <laughs> is a Chinese story. But it's fine, but it's just showing you that when the system is big enough, rich enough, complex enough, <coughs> you should expect all types of things, including the emergence of life. Right? Okay. So, there's a summarized uh, list of uh, uh, power laws from the empirical study. Um, in 2011, Bruce West and Gary Bolini and published this book with this nice table. Over 50. Uh, over 50. In different subject area from anthropology, to sociology, psychology, uh, physiology, uh, physics, information science, geophysics, economics, and bot botany, and uh, biology. Okay. So a lot of uh, applications behind. So that enables us to believe there are fraction, uh, that there are uh, uh, inverse power law because of this complex system. So let me show you uh, some typical examples like worldwide work fire size and uh, uh, wildfire. Uh, let me see. 
data compression, and this is forest fire. So basically, if you plot size of events and cumulative frequency together, and using a log scale, using a log scale, then you will start to see this type of um, straight line, inverse polar type of uh, behavior. So, and this kind of this kind of a, uh, this kind of a, uh, log log plot with a linear trend is called inverse power law. Inverse power law. And uh, if you have enough data, you plot some data, you send to science nature. Okay, 20 years ago you can do that. <coughs> Today, can you do that? My my um, hypothesis is yes, you can still do that. But you need to add fractional calculus as an interpretation for that. Okay? So previously simply display this will be fine. Okay? So good news. If you have data, you have seen this, you interpret this one with fractional calculus, you can consult me, I can help you. So and you can use the, the, the slope to quantify the nature of the systems. So this is a typical moment of, of uh, emergence of new ideas. Okay. One day I was lecturing, and usually after the lecture, I take picture, stitch it as a big picture to, for my record. I discovered that I discovered something. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so that's called bow tie structure. Okay, so you have a bow tie in here. This is the bow tie. So you have a complex system phenomenon or behavior. And so we, 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 we see in a macroscopic level, we always see those behaviors. So macroscopic level, but, oh, I got a scale free phenomenon. And, oh, I got a heavy tellness, I got a long range memory, uh, long range dependence, and long memory, and so on and so forth. But all these things are just because of something behind it, it's called inverse power law. Inverse power law. Inverse power law. Okay? Inverse power law. So this is for a bow tie structure. I, I draw it in here. This is a kind of bow tie structure. Bow tie structure. Okay. Bow tie. Okay. And this bow tie structure was used in a, a complex design community to, to, to explain the complex. Okay? So the complexity will be reflected as a microscopic behavior. And all this behavior, the mathematical foundation is nothing but inverse power. Okay, inverse power. Um, so again, that inverse power law can happen in different contexts. We usually use uh, that uh, like scale free uh, networks. Uh, degree distribution is you know uh, proportional to uh, the degree uh, one over degree to power of alpha. Uh, pink noise is power spectrum density. You know, what is uh, slope of it? Like it's not an integer uh, multiple, uh, multiples of uh, minus 20 degree per decade. And PDF uh, is not decaying exponentially like Gaussian. You know, it could be like Kurt Koch, it could be like Levy, uh, Hey tell. And all the correlation function is no longer exponentially decays, decaying algebraically. That is uh, a power law, okay, algebraic. Allometry, that's a dedicated article explaining this on linked to fractional calculus. Anomalous relaxation, uh, anomalous diffusion, uh, you have similar, all this, you will see the inverse power behind it in different contexts. Okay. All right. Okay. So among this, I like the stochasticity, stochastic nature of the interpretation of this inverse power law. Okay. So my time is perfect, right? Okay, question. Is it, can you mind if I ask a question right now? Oh, sure, definitely. Okay. So, um, I actually got two questions. The first Forest is, fire, You're, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you. I want to sell you this long time ago. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. It's, Your data should be revisited using this thing. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just, the uh, first question is I'm trying to figure out whether or not your understanding of complexity or definition of complexity coheres with kind of the standard approach from the folks of the San Fe Institute. Established the science yes. of complexity. Yes, I read. Stuart Kaufman and Billy Mitchell and, yeah. and those folks. So, on the standard view, um, there's some space 
between predictability and true randomness, where lots of weird stuff happens, and that's where you get Neville broad sets and fractals and all sorts of other stuff. And more specifically, the idea is that if the margin of error of any particular parameter exceeds your ability to make a prediction of it, then there are certain cases where weird things happen just shy of complete randomness. And that's where you get this lots of interesting stuff. Um, so it sounds like you're providing a more detailed explanation of that basic approach that the Santa Fe folks are advancing that has something to do with like English catalog and fractional calculus. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Question? That part is missing from their framework. I tried yes. to sell them in 2009. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so then, if you don't mind, so the second question is, so I'm, I'm okay with fuzzy I'm logic. I'm aware of what you just said. What's that? I am aware of what you just said. But, but that's, but that, my interpretation is correct, uh, that yeah. you're, you're providing kind of more detail on the basic story. Yeah, I hope. Okay, cool. Um, so, then the second question is um, about fractional calculus, and I don't know what the heck it is. So I'm okay with fuzzy logic, since I spent a long time working with Lockheed Zada while he was still around. Um, but can you just give me like two more sentences on what fractional calculus is for? It's a differentiation and the integration of non-integer order. Okay. Okay, you don't, you just like you, you have integers, you have something, non-integers in between. The same thing is true for uh, differentiation and integration. You don't have to hold this all, differentiate orders and integration orders to be integer. And it turns out that today I'm going to say that um, because of that, we're going to have a better way to understand the complexity by looking into in between uh, integer orders, non integer order dynamics. Okay, so I'll come by and we'll, we'll chat more. So, uh, Definitely. Everybody's time. Definitely. Like I wanted little... to do that a long time ago. Now I think <laughs> it's I, a I good. I'm going to stop myself. Good, yeah, sure. You know, then we can talk a lot on this. <laughs> so basically, we are, yeah, it's very good to. Uh, enable us to uh, have a look. So this is a uh, kind of salesman's pitch. Uh, people may not agree with me, uh, but I believe this is the truth. Okay? Uh, this is my view. So I said 2009 was because I got tenured in 2008. I was finding a place to do sabbatical. And I talked to SFI people, and they don't want to listen to me. Okay? Uh, I said that complexity can be better characterized, can be even tuned or managed, okay, by using fractional calculus point of view. Okay. Okay. Um, so I end up uh, going to South Africa for my sabbatical, but I learned another side of carbon, um, carbon credits stuff. You know. um, so, yes. If we want to do a better job in characterization and regulation of, maybe regulation is the wrong word, management actually is. That fits this MCS better. Uh, complex system. We have to use fractional, that order dynamics point of view. So in fact, okay, I'm gonna surprise you next slide. In fact, there is a book show up in 2015. And Bruce West visited us in 2014, when I was secretary year here. And uh, Bruce West visited us. And uh, Chris Kello is uh, one of his followers, okay, if I can say that. But I myself is a total submission to his view and philosophy. And I read all his books. I read all his papers, okay? Nothing left. I made a comprehensive collection of his works. Articles, pieces, book reviews, whatever you can you can find. Okay, um, so I have that link if I interest. Okay, his book is exactly the same title. Can you see that? Fractal tackles the view of complex. I see myself trying to interpret his philosophy here. Okay, uh, he said tomorrow's science. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, he sent me the book draft initially. The book title is Tomorrow's Science. The subtitle is fractional characters for you. Okay. Then in the real in the, in the end they switched. I, I don't know what happened behind, but it's it's very interesting. Uh, so in, that implies so PhD students listen. Okay, you are doing yesterday's science, or you have to use integer order characters. Uh, 
If you want to use tomorrow's science, <laughs> you have to use fractional capital. That's a hidden message, okay? I hope you appreciate that. And he wrote a lot of books about complex worlds, uncertain, unequal, and unfair. So whenever you meet anything that is uncertain, that is unequal, that is unfair, you should feel happy. Why? This is the inherent nature of being complex. You got to have it. You better live with it. You, you, you better not fight to make a system of 100% equal war. Isn't that what we really want? <coughs> Probably not. Maybe it is not politically correct, but I believe the reason we can evolve is because of the complexity, because of the diversity of the community and the society and human beings. So basically the message in here is the reason we see uncertainty and inequality and unfairness is because our worlds are complex. So they inherit. So and there is an encyclopedia of complex systems and sciences. So only appeared once for about ten thousand pages. I know who, who put that in that. It's in the reference, okay? So, amazing. So, the people, most of them are ignoring what I just said, right, the character's view. And uh, whenever I see this thing, I feel like I need to do something. Let me share with you another story. I, I read this book, very famous. Uh, so, when I saw this book, I know that it is connected to fractional characters. The reason you have extreme weather is because of the complexity, is because of the heavy tailness. And because of the heavy tailness, you have it's a very big spike. Rare events will happen more and more frequently. Okay? So because of that, pressure of the dynamics become. So there is nothing to show that. So I didn't want to read this book. I know that. So return back to here is the formula I want to put. So the real nature runs in a fractional order dynamic way, no matter what, okay? We use integer order calculus to model, to predict, to do it. It's only for our own convenience, okay? The nature still runs in a fractional order dynamic way, okay? So that's the truth, I hope, uh, which is, to me, yes, okay? So inverse power law should be understood as a meta law or fractional order calculus. I'll show a little bit more details for you. So all these are a microscopic level everybody, normal people can see. And this, we think all this microscopic behavior lies all this in inverse power law, okay? But what is the inverse power law? It's simple as this. You scale this x with c times x, you can end up with the f of x, the law is the same. So that's simple, that's simple. And how this is linked to fractional calculus? Okay, so I'm glad to tell you that, yes. Exponential law decaying corresponding to integer order calculus. That inverse power law, the algebraic decay corresponding to fractional order differential equation. For that you bother. First Carroll has a very nice scaling law survey written, uh, advertising his work uh, in social science, uh, cognitive science. But in engineering, I have seen this again and again, okay? Uh, so, so you heard of different things like inverse power law, scale free, scale invariant power, all these things to me, they are the same. Just algebraic decay, okay? So in a statistical sense, so, so the exponential law is like Gaussian, okay? So the tail goes to beyond three sigma, you have nothing. Our mindset is brainwashed in that way. Beyond three sigma, there isn't anything there almost, okay? That's not true, okay. that's not true. So say for example that your tail behaves uh, like uh, inverse power law, like for algebraic decay, like Cauchy, uh, this is like a Cauchy. So this one compares to the exponential decay in the tail side, this is much heavier than that. So the red curve, Cauchy is called heavy tail <coughs> distribution. Because of the heavy tail, this is, you have very rare events and it will show up relatively high, 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 high frequency. Okay? Relatively, okay, to, to, the, the, to, to the exponential decay Gaussian distribution, okay? Our brain was equipped with this uh, 
Gaussian distribution. So because of that, we claim, oh, this is a rare, this is rare events. But there isn't anything that rare. Rare is compared to relativity to Gaussian distribution. Make sense? So there are different tail, you can tune this tail, and the, the index of the tail corresponding to the degree of complexity, I believe. So this is showing many of the uh, conferences. So I want to show you one slide to show the connection from signal and system point of view. So you have a signal driving the system, you generate another signal. So if this signal is a white noise and you have an output is also colored noise, in this case, it's a, this is a fraction order integration. Okay, so then you will get a, a fractional order stochastic process, and its uh, order correlation function is a power. Can you see? The power response of this one is power. So you see power all the time here. Okay, that's exactly because of the fractional order integration here. Okay, so they are connected. So I'm going to show you. Mm, uh, long uh, algebraic tail <coughs> is going very uh, slowly like this. The exponential tail is something like this. Okay, in between there's something called stretched exponential tail. So you can see tail behavior is important. I suggest if you have a big data, you should really check the tail behavior. Okay, tail behavior. So um, so and also the stochastic. Uh, probability distribution, how they evolve, they satisfy something called focal Planck equation of fractional order if it is uh, in the power law, okay? It's in the power. So these are the fractional order partial differential equations. Read this paper, you are going to see a lot of uh, interesting connections, okay? Connections. So you know that Gaussian distribution, Gaussian distribution is when the alpha is two, or beta is one, uh, sorry, beta should be um, that called heat transfer, a uh, heat transfer equation, heat equation, okay, or diffusion equation, and it's a uh, uh, green function. Yeah, it's green function. It is exactly the Gaussian distribution, the PDF. Okay, so that part I'm going to skip the technicality there. So let me go to the cartoon to show you that. So fractional calculus. Connecting the uh, is the dynamics, fracking all the dynamics behind the power law, it will be the foundation for us to understand uh, complexity. So therefore, you, to me, the previous complexity research is touching only part of that uh, elephant. While uh, fracking the calculus view will enable you to see the whole elephant. Okay, and uh, we should do better than the albatross. Okay, albatross. Um, that's uh, actually, that's actually this is your uh, senior, right? <laughs> you know this name, you know this very well. So uh, my point here is that this is a fractional order heavy-tailed Levy distribution. So basically that the albatross learn to use fractional calculus to search food. So in, a, in, a, in the millions and millions of years of evolution, the birds end up equipped with the knowledge of fractional calculus. The reason is the fo focal Planck equation of this st st uh, stochasticity okay, is fractional order. Okay, let me put back one more slide. Is this when this is only a fraction 1.5? Okay, okay. So it's amazing that connection. So I would like to say birds already learn how to use fractional calculus to better survive. Or we say that way: evolution taught the birds to use fractional calculus such that their searching pattern is not Gaussian, is not a Brownian motion, it is a Levy and with big jumps. Okay. Well, so time is good. Okay. So five more minutes, okay? So so you say, oh this is interesting but how can I use it? So I'm going to advocate one thing for you that big data can benefit if you study big data. A lot of historic data of your forest fires. You can also use that idea. So, but I come from a different perspective. So, um, uh, last summer I was giving a talk about uh, meta of the current capitalism, big data. So this is a zoomed in talk, 
very technical. But this one I'm going to give very quick overview. But MAD stands for, you guys use MAD for management analytics and design, right? Decision. A decision, okay, right. Here the MAD stands for modeling, analysis, and design, okay? Modeling, analysis, and design are of variability. Okay, it's possible you can quantify that and you can even change that. So, but anyway, uh, we're going to talk about big data. Uh, so, big data is generated by a certain system. Is that system simple? Cannot be simple. It has to be complex. Is that right? So, yes. To be complex, you have big data? I think so. If the system is not complex, why do you care about the, the so-called big data? from the simple system, okay? So it has to be complex. So um, there's a triple a 5V, and I saw another version, so 10V um, characterization of that. There is one V loss, it's called variability, a variety of variability. Okay. And uh, as early as 2015, I kind of trying to connect in the dots of drones, big data, and fragmented characters, okay? <laughs> as early as today. <laughs> but to me, like yesterday. So, so you know, everybody knows on campus, probably heard of, I'm a drone professor, and I, I try to do uh, research related to drones. But to me, drones is just a big data collector or generator. So, so that's a, it's kind of moving sensor uh, platform, and collecting the big data makes sense of it using fragmented characters. The natural connection between them. Okay, I'll show you an example right now. Um, I'll go back to this one later. So the reason is uh, I coined the term is called FODA, fracking order data analytics. Let me give you a simple example. Like you, it is a mean, you about mean variance. Yeah, it's very simple to compute 1.5 order uh, moment, right? Maybe that moment can tell you more stories about it. Uh, so, what is FODA is using coin the new innovative metrics based on using fraction order signal processing techniques, quantifying the generating dynamics of observed or perceived variabilities in the big data. That's the way to go. There's a long list of techniques to give you new innovative metrics you use. Okay? Uh, we really need to see an example, okay? So the x-axis is the wavelength, y-axis is the reflectance. So you have sunshine, and basically I do agriculture, okay? I do precision agriculture. So I want to see sunshine and reflect it from the canopy of you know, like almond trees and uh, to see uh, whether they need more water or not, or we are under or over irrigating for this field. So we, we want to understand, we want to understand that by checking this. So just this reflects, is this a complex system? Anything living, <laughs> still alive, <coughs> it has to be complex. So a crop is a complex system, for sure. Because if it is complex, think about a tree, a canopy, so the reflectance from the canopy definitely show up the variability between the leaves. So if you know that then there's a new identical, the same two snowflakes, same is true, you don't have the same identical two leaves. So the variability is there. How to get out this variability such that we understand correlated with our deficiency or of the water, uh, water stress. So that's what we do. So we take pictures. This is a canopy from the top, you see a canopy. But there are some soils in here. Get in too, we don't want that. So then uh, we just remove the soils. Then there's still some holes, I just remove those. Don't, so these are all the leaves and, and put together and find out the mean of this NDVI and normalized difference and vegetation index. This is NDVI. This SWP is our ground truth. I, ideally, I hope you have one-on-one -on -one relationship for this slope, right? 
R square uh, like greater than 0 0.6, that would be nice. We end up with R square is 0 0.001. Wow, I was very angry about this. But in the end, I feel like, ah, props will not lie to us, okay? They don't lie, pretend something. Props are telling the truth. The reason is we didn't receive that, what they are trying to keep telling us, okay? So we, we tried different ways, didn't solve this problem. 0.001, we didn't solve, we didn't solve the R-square issue. There's no correlation. Any industry claim is not true. They are lying, okay? So to detect the correlation of this level of water stress in can canopy, we really, really need to look into their variability and fractional order moments, okay? Um, I'll, I'll ignore that technical details. I just tell you that our group solved this problem. We find out, okay? Um, we, we use fractional calculus, save the world one day, maybe, because they get us to receive those variability in a much better way. Um, so drones create big data and demand fractional data analytics because of the complexity, thus variability, inherent in the live process. This is great. I think we solved that, we have a secret ingredient um, to get this correlation right, okay? So finally, I'm going to show you that there's a website you might want to take a look. It's called Fractional Calculus and Complex Systems. So uh, I'm still uh, editor-in-chief for this, uh, what they call, volume, okay? So there's a dedicated volume assigned for me, and there's uh, everything already. I need better uh, uh, contributions to, I'm still working on that, and I delayed this book for one year. I think it's good, as time goes, my understanding is much, much better than a year ago of this, the whole volume, how it should be organized. Uh, so this new volume, Encyclopedia of Complexity and System Science, uh, they are supposed to uh, get onto the market in 2020, uh, 2020 next year. Okay, next year, it will have uh, 16,000 pages. So remember, the previous version is uh, only 10,000 pages. Okay, this is 16,000 pages. So then they split this one into different volumes. So I kind of like get one volume. So uh, welcome your contribution if you have any idea. So I, I wrote a proposal to the editor-in-chief. I had a cold start with the email. I never talked to him. I don't know this guy. I just said, you need to listen to me. And then he listened. So I only used this one page to convince him. We need a separate volume. And he, he kind of agreed. So I'll put the slides for you guys. And also this, this document file can be found in this uh, website. So you can download this proposal and take a look. And think about if you feel interesting, interested, you should consider to talk to me and contribute. So in 2016, there was a dedicated uh, uh, workshop in Amsterdam and in the U.S. Army Research Office, Bruce West, and this is uh, organized by her, uh, uh, by his uh, uh, former postdoc, Mark Zappa. And look at this workshop, it's very interesting. But most in important thing is the title of this workshop, the language, language, okay? So this new language of complex. So I hope this is getting more and more people to agree you know, on this. And uh, yeah, I think there are many different ways using different uh, uh, angle to introduce fractional calculus. I want to share this one with you. Bruce West said that the reason we need a fractional calculus is help those physical life social scientists understand problems that are otherwise too big, too small, too slow, too fast, you know? So that means integer order calculus can make us to work in, in the middle ground, okay, but when you push the limit, I want extra performance from that. We need to go to extreme performance, then you will need too complex, too remote, 
in time to remove the space. And as a issue, too unethical to do. You have to use that modeling in practical patterns. I think you know, mimic the infectious agents, cyber you know, kind of thing. Uh, I think I can stop here. Uh, do I need a slide to stop? No, I don't have a slide to stop. So. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, let me stop here. I think the timing is just nice. Okay. All right. Thank you.